Hello and welcome to the latest in our Saturday Spotlight interviews. This is Anna Amelia from Northeast Animal Rights and we're delighted to have along Roger Yates, who is a co-founder of the Vegan Information Project, lifelong animal rights activist, sometime academic and all round go good person for the animals. So welcome Roger and thank you very much for joining us today, we appreciate it. Well thanks very much and thanks for asking me. You're very welcome. So we'll go straight to the questions if that's okay. So yep. we know you've been an animal rights activist for a very, very long time. So in the days when people thought activists were extreme and no one had heard of vegans, so obviously you had quite a hard job then. So what are the changes that you've seen over the years in terms of activism, um, you know, the focus of active, you know, of, of specific projects and also um, the methods which are used and the public perception of animal rights as well? I mean, quite a lot, lot in, in that, that one question, but basically yeah. how do you think things have changed? <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might ask you to go through those again but um well you know i think animal rights people are still extremists because they they hold laptops of the street nowadays you know um mm. but um in terms of the kind of substantive change i would say that um we're no longer looking for enemies to fight we're more like looking for people to educate that's the the basic <clears throat> of it and in terms of the content of the education that's changed as well in the sense that um, back in the day uh, we didn't campaign for veganism. Th this is one of the things that uh, new vegans find really fascinating, the fact that everyone back, say, in the 1980s uh, were vegan who were campaigning, the vast majority anyway. But um, veganism wasn't a subject of the campaign, so it was single issues and stuff. And so, you know, I, I, did, I did lots and lots of radio shows, quite, quite a few TV things. And I don't remember talking about veganism very much because it wasn't asked for a start. Mm -hmm. See, nowadays, if it wasn't asked by the journalists, it would certainly be brought up by the person of the first answer. Yeah. So things have changed uh, drastically in that sense. Mm -hmm. So kind of like looking at, um, so single issues you're talking about, probably I'm presuming the things like fox hunting and vivisection. Um, yeah. And so less of, a, less of a focus on the plant-based food part of, of veganism. Um, so kind of, like a traditional animal rights um, sort of thing, isn't it really, rather than the veganism, which is kind of every, yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The only, the only change I'd make of that statement is that there's was, there was no focus on vegan philosophy, yeah. Um, yeah. Which, which is the important thing. And yeah. that is, well, see, it's interesting now. I mean, there's a big focus on veganism now, and you could say that veganism is, is the moral baseline of the movement. Yeah. But whether some people do f focus on the food part of it, that is that is still kind of playing out within the vegan community, I think, because yeah. there is a lot of um, issues about a lot of people, including journalists, which is a real shame, think that veganism is a diet. And of course, it, yeah. it's a radical philosophy. So that's the difference there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we often have to correct people when they say it, but they talk about vegan food. I mean, they're, they're talking about food which is suitable for vegans. If it's not vegan food, it's plant based food. And like you said, the, the diet issue is something which comes up over and over again. People do think it's about the food and it's not. It's about the wider yeah, issues. There's, there's right, so many yeah. other I, issues. Yeah, yeah. I think, there's, I mean, there's a couple of things linguistically you can do there in the sense that you can talk about vegans food. Yeah. Or you could talk, you know, vegans apostrophe S, as it were. Yeah. Um, you could talk about vegan friendly food and you can yeah. talk about uh, plant food yeah. or plant based food. Yeah. Um, there was a, the first a uh, vegan professional footballer, uh, Neil Robinson, sa sadly mm. died recently. He mm. talked about plant, plant exclusive uh, oh. diet. Right. So there are ways of getting around it, which yeah. don't um, allude to the idea that veganism is a diet, which is always problematic. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is Particularly when people are calling themselves vegan, but actually all they're doing is making a change to the food um, and, and they're not doing anything else. Um, so yeah, no, normally what happens is that when you get involved with the social movement like veganism it kind of tends to radicalize you and i think that used to be the case um before and i think it's less so now sadly yeah so we've um quite a lot of us have seen your still alive program with um with with uh, with ronnie who i bumped yes. into at the beginning actually bizarre and, and i am i am still alive too <laughs> You definitely are still alive it's you know we haven't wasted away little skeletons we're, you know we haven't got vitamin, vitamin b12 deficiencies or anything like that no, I, need, I need to waste away a little bit more actually, to be honest. <laughs> so so how did it how did it start and, how, and how's it going uh, it's going good yeah i think it, uh, it's probably ronnie's idea certainly the title was ronnie's idea and um you know ronnie likes to get his ideas out there and we're yeah. both concerned about the movement i've always been concerned about movement issues 
And, um, you know, we, we've always got something to say about kind of developments in the movement and developments that we'd kind of like to see, maybe some things that we'd like to see return to. The, yeah. the show last night, for example, was about autonomy and about people yeah. thinking for themselves. Yeah. And um, again, it goes back to this idea that involvement in a social movement usually radicalizes people. Mm. We think that probably animal advocacy is not as radical as it used to be. Yeah. In the sense that there's um, there's no automatic connection with other justice movements nowadays. In yeah. fact, there's a a big push for the kind of animals only type mm -hmm. of veganism, which mm -hmm. for me isn't actually veganism. But mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we've always got something to think about, and yeah. we've always got something to talk about, even if it's only that we're still alive. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there's a few things you mentioned there. I mean, which which kind of uh, I went down to the big one at the, at the weekend, and uh, and one of the things I was saying when I did my live stream is about the fact that animal justice, climate justice, and social justice are all interlinked, and that's what we should be looking at. We should be looking at working together, rather than just focusing on kind of like being. Um, I, I don't want to use the word blinkered, but kind of um, you know, kind of closed closed minded to to other yeah, things. Tunnel <coughs> vision or something. Tunnel um, vision. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, a, a, lot, a lot of new advocates will say that um, these issues are being introduced into animal advocacy, but it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. They're kind of trying to take something that was there all the time out. Yeah. So yeah. even if the, you look at the pioneers of the vegan social movement, for example, yeah. they talked about peace aims. In fact, it, it was a peace movement for them. Yeah. You yeah. know, it started during the Second World War. They'd seen mm -hmm. uh, atrocities. They'd kind of heard about the Holocaust and all this kind yeah. of stuff. And so it was a real big thing about uh, peace. It was an extension of kind of anti-slavery. Um, yeah. You know, it was about justice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it was a it was a big idea. And in fact, um, one of the biggest ideas was it was about the moral evolution of humanity. Yeah. You know, and so they thought that veganism would do a, a massive job for humans as mm -hmm. well as obviously for other animals. So yeah. there's a kind of focus and scope. Now mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of new vegans don't like this focus and scope idea, mm -hmm. but the focus is always on the other animals. Mm -hmm. So there's, the, you know, there's no problem about that. The scope mm -hmm. is always being wider, yeah. but it's not a threat to the focus. So I don't actually wonder, I don't really know why they're so worried about it, but they are. Yeah. I think uh, one of the things in our group we've been quite, um, quite clear about is that um, we aren't, it's about every, every being. It's not just about, you know, you, you can't sort of say that you're, um, anti-human if you're if you've any pro pro animals it's kind of you can you have to be pro all all beings um because mm -hmm. they're so interlinked i mean there's we, we know obviously there's issues with, with mental health the slaughterhouse workers there's issues with and um, with farmers so it's kind of trying to accept that these people are working yeah, in these it's industries just as for all philosophy yeah. veganism mm -hmm. but i mean even tom reagan the author of the case for animal rights mm -hmm. <laughs> he says well you know the animal rights movement is a part of and not opposed to the human rights movement yeah. so yeah those linkages were always there. Yeah. And it, it irritates me a little bit that people say we're trying to bring these things in mm -hmm. when really it's the other way around. Yeah. They're trying to take those things out. Yeah. So moving on to a slightly different subject now. So um, I'm, I'm aware that when I'm talking to different people and when I'm kind of like asking for interviews and when we're, we're going to different events where there's the speakers and things, um, I'm also aware that um, in terms of um, numbers of vegans, so there's a, there's a comparatively lower number of male vegans to, um, to female vegans, and then there's a higher number of high profile male activists or, you know, kind of male speakers to, to, um, to female. So, so why do you think that is? It's the way of the world, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. Apart from the feminist movement, you've always yeah. got this problem. Um, yeah. Animal advocacy uh, has always, you know, in terms of demographics, have always been, there's always been more females than males, always been. Yeah. But generally speaking, the, the best known people are uh, the guys, mm -hmm. you know, they push themselves forward. I suppose their voices are louder. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it's even a problem in, say, university seminars. You've yeah. got to monitor it, you know, because sometimes some men will try to kind of dominate it and stuff. So it's just a general kind of societal thing. Uh, really um, of male dominance and mm. it can be transferred into into a social movement and no, normally you try to kind of mitigate against that by having kind of you know some kind of rules and regulations as, as it were mm. and, and different ways of you know yeah. sharing responsibility and that but in I mean if you look at now at the uh, the current crop of so-called influencers 
you know the the most famous ones are obviously male right yeah. there there are a couple of female ones but I, I bet i bet you not many vegans could name them yeah yeah i mean i mean i think um i think you're right it is a societal issue not a, i don't know if it's a problem such but it's a, it's an issue but um within the actual um vegan movement um mm. We know that. I mean, you know, when I talk to people like Alex Lockwood, he he did a, he did a talk about how to turn a man vegan in, in forty five minutes. So kind of like addressing the the issues around males being vegan. Um, so it's a bit of a. I mean, it's I, I don't think we're going to be able to solve the, the it. Mas- in, the masculinity thing was it all the um, yeah you know, I think yeah I think so. I'm too macho to to not eat flesh. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that's a lot of what we get. I mean, when we we, we get um, we're getting trolled mercilessly at the moment on our social media, and the majority of the trolls tend to be males. There seems to be less females doing that. But I don't know if I'm just you know, you kind of like seeing what you want to say. You're kind yeah. of generalizing. But I'd never thought of that before. That's an interesting yeah. Um, issue. Yeah. Another yeah. thing, of course, is that sometimes um, people can get a skewed idea. I mean, some feminists are very critical of, say, the animal liberation front because of its kind of maleness and the, yeah. and the mass and stuff, which are mainly done just to hide your identity. You know, people tend not to do them yeah. during a raid. Yeah. But there was a lot of women involved. In mm-hmm. fact, some of the most iconic ALF images are mm-hmm. of women, but of course yeah. you don't know. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. you know, some of the HSA groups that I was involved, that's Hunt Saboteurs, yeah. they, were, they were women-led, you know. Um, yeah. I was mm-hmm. part of a DXC, women-led mm-hmm. DXC group in mm-hmm. Dublin, you know, I was the I was the only male member, mm-hmm. you know, and so um, mm-hmm. in that sense, they did they did all the organising. I just mm-hmm. step stepped mm-hmm. aside, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, and if you if you do it in that kind of thoughtful way, mm-hmm. you can get a, get around that problem. It's just that it takes a little bit of thought yeah. and a little bit of um, you've got to, you've got to be giving. But then mm-hmm. people in the social movement are supposed to be so. Yeah, yeah, there should be. So if you had your time again, you know, if you start like say today is a, you're a day one vegan, okay, and by vegan I mean animal rights activist. Or, or just all just the, out of the shell, just out yeah, of the egg. J- just out, yeah. So is there anything that you would do differently? Well, the focus on veganism would be a lot earlier than, than it's ever mm. it's been bec- yeah. because we, we missed a massive trick there, really. Mm. Um, as I said, we did lots and lots of interviews. Ronnie and I did lots yes. of interviews, and and it, we st- we kind of stuck to the single issue kind of remit almost, and we should have broken out of that. So mm. I think I think we changed that. Also, um, in terms of the kind of press work that we did, um, we, we would we would have used it more educationally for the public. It, mm. it, it you know the the public was almost ignored by the direct action movement at one at one point it was all all about kind of you know you know beating vivisection and you know bringing down this and and kind of closing down that and Mm. everything Mm. and and so really the education part of it Mm. wasn't really focused on we didn't think in those terms as much Mm. as just explaining the action in Mm. order to kind of we want to close this laboratory down for example Mm. right so that that would be a big change uh, Mm. if we did it all over again i'm sure yeah. So you, you've mentioned a few direct actions you've been involved in in the past. And obviously this, this um, you know, Animal Rise and, and other, other organisations now are doing direct actions. So what's your thoughts on those, those actions which are going on now? So we're talking about like the sit-ins, we're talking about, um, you know, the Grand National sort of stuff. So what are your, your opinions on those? What's your thoughts on them? I thought it was a mixed bag for, for me, but in general terms, whatever the action is, the claims making as sociologists call it which is the the messaging the messaging that goes with the action that's more, more important in a way than the action yeah and uh, animal risings claims making has not been good so far mm-hmm. um from an animal rights point of view you know they talk about animal lovers and all that kind of stuff and focus on cruelty which is a welfare concern mm-hmm. so i i would change a heck of a lot about their mm-hmm. uh, about their messaging i'd be more i'd be more interested in in them concentrating on the messaging than on what on what they do, because as mm. I said, yeah, I mean, there's no such thing as a kind of animal welfare or animal rights action. Yeah. Mm. It depends on what you say about it. Really. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, like you know, I mean, you can you can give if you if you put attention on something like red tractor and all that kind of stuff, you can give the indication that oh well, if if they if they sort out the kind of cruelty, everything will be fine, and and that's the last thing. Yeah. An animal rights person wants for people to, to go away with as, as a message. We're not we're not talking about free range. We're talking about animal yeah. liberation here. Yeah. So you know. The, yeah. yeah. So it's the the messaging. 
So I'm, I'm not opposed to the action, uh, but I mm. think that they should sharpen upon the messaging. Really. Yeah, I think that's a very valid point you've made, David. We did a, um, a recent event, which was um, it was a ditch dairy. It was a, um, a campaign against uh, Costa uh, because of um, an expose f- um, from with the yeah, farm. We talked about that on, on the show last night. Funny enough. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and we we were saying our problem with that was it was a good it was a good event, but our problem with that was not about ditching Costa for this dairy. It was actually ditching dairy full stop. So yeah. we kind of we talked about Costa and we also talked about why you shouldn't have have cow's milk in the first place. You know, That's kind right. of I mean, like what, yeah. I mean, what do you want Costa to do? And also what do you want the customers of Costa to do? Yeah. You want them to go vegan. That's yeah. that's the bottom line for us. You yeah. know, uh, we, yeah. we want people to live vegan, we want people to understand yeah. that veganism is a brilliant mm. philosophy. Yeah. A- and in the kind of age of climate crisis, mm. more and more relevant than it's ever been. Yeah, it is. That's what we need them to understand. Yeah. Not, not that we want them to switch brands or yeah, exactly, yeah. You know, switch yeah. suppliers because one supplier is cruel and yeah. the other one isn't, and all. I mean that 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 is that is not mm. that's not that's not animal rights. It's not veganism. That's yeah. that's animal welfare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So moving on to social media now. Um, I mean, kind of like, in the, um, I mean, when I to set up this group, um, I was very sort of like new with uh, with social media and everything. I, um, I didn't really have much experience in it, but obviously now we've got. We, we use all platforms, including YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, the whole lot. So, what do you what do you think about using social media for activism? I mean, what are the pros and the cons? Uh, I mean, the good, we... the, good old, the good old TikTok. Well, obviously, uh, no. um, yeah. what we say as sociologists is that um, it used to be the case where um, social movements were very interested in getting onto the mass media because the mass part of mass media is very seductive that you can get to millions of people at once. Well, now you can I can with social media and you can with with a platform like TikTok. The the danger is always the formation of vegan bubbles and you end up just talking to each other. Yeah. Now, um, I was interested in TikTok um, for about 18 months now, I suppose, maybe less. But um, because it was kind of outside of the social bubble, uh, the vegan bubble, sorry. So. If you go live there, you get a lot of members of the public and you get a lot of trolls, obviously, but you get a lot of members of the public and a lot of them are vegan curious. Mm. And so you can talk to the public. So that's the equivalent of setting up a stall in your town or your city or your village Mm. and and speaking to people. Mm. You know, if you do it on Facebook and other places, Instagram, Mm. I think I think a vegan bubble quickly um, Mm. appears. I think people on Facebook, for example, even if they don't get unfriended by their non-vegan friends and family, mm. I think they turn the notifications off because they, you know, especially if yeah. people have got this habit of um, sharing graphic footage, graphic, yeah. you know, you, you you could really kind of put people off that way. Um, and that's not to say that there might be a, a place for that kind of material. It's mm. just that we ought to be very selective and very easygoing a, a, mm. about it mm. in terms of, um, you know, there's some interesting um, work about how we recruit in our movement. You know, is it about moral shocks, which it is, mm-hmm. or is it about networking, which it tends not to be? Mm-hmm. And some people suggest that if you recruit through networking, community based grassroots kind of thing, it ends up being stronger than just by shocking people. Yeah. Because you might shock somebody with, say, watch earthlings or, or, or what, but then they go back into speciesism mm-hmm. and they then surrounded by their species his friends and family and everything and so that shock kind of wears off mm-hmm. if they've got a community connection it could be a bit you know so there's there's issue there's issues like that and the same with social media you, you've got to be careful who are you talking about who you're talking to in in what way is it going and are you just talking to each other because what's the point yeah. of that that's yeah. the main thing yeah i think you're right i mean we we kind of um, we started off with facebook and then we kind of like expanded on, the, on twitter and tiktok and everything um, because we thought that obviously they all have the different reach, the different age groups, the different demographic. Um, so you're trying to reach everyone, but obviously the message has to be slightly different for the different ages and the kind of, um, you know, what I feel is if we're spending like a kind of like a disproportionate amount of time on TikTok trying to put videos out um, rather than um, actually sending sort of educational stuff out on other other, other platforms. Um, it's it's quite a tricky one because because um, obviously the, the age I am I'm not an, I'm not a natural TikTok user, um, so I wouldn't. Um, but you've described it as a live. I've never done lives on TikTok. 
I tend to do my lives on Facebook. And you're right, because of the Facebook lives, they do go out to kind of, they're all going out I, to vegans anyway. Sense, um, I would recommend that you try a TikTok live because you mm. will get a different audience for mm. sure ab about yeah. that. And then it's a question of filtering out the trolls from the vegan yeah. curious people. And sometimes mm. they do it themselves, Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've been I've been on some some of those big big lives, yeah. but the problem with that is that the the comments go so quick you can't keep keep up with them. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually better to have a smaller one yeah. where the same person gets a chance to ask a couple of questions uh -huh. uh, rather than one. You know, so it's the equivalent yeah. of having a bit of a conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, and and if the other people allow them to do that, mm -hmm. then it can be quite an educational thing. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Have a go at a TikTok live. Yeah, I might have a go. <laughs> as, long, as long as you don't come and watch. <laughs> and then I'll okay, be yeah, okay. <laughs> and put me under pressure. <laughs> I just listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, the time's gone really, really, really quickly there. I think we just scratched the surface of all the stuff that you do and what you what you have done and what, you, what you're doing. Um, so what's next for you at the moment? I mean, I know obviously you're still alive. Um, so what, what else are you doing? Well, I'm doing the time tunnel because I think I think people knowing the history of their movement is important, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, the reason that the history is important because the values are important yeah. and it's not as though the values are kind of set in stone. Mm -hmm. But I think if people want to come up with new ideas, mm -hmm. they need to do it in relation to what was and then say, well, OK, well, there's a problem with that. So this is better than that. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's a worrying trend at the moment where people come into the movement and decide for themselves what veganism and animal rights is mm -hmm. and without any reference to what it actually is in terms mm -hmm. of philosophy or history mm -hmm. and everything and and I don't I don't think that's kind of fair I mean it's for me I always make the same analogy it's a, it's equivalent of somebody going into the kind of Marxist movement as it were mm -hmm. if such a thing exists and going right well I don't care about what this Marx and mm -hmm. you go hang on a second you can't you can't do that but this is happening in the vegan movement and you yeah. can't do that either and yes. so i think the history is, is important so uh we're, we're doing that we're also going back on the street um yeah. pretty soon mm -hmm. uh, uh, first time well we kind of went back for a few weeks and then there was another lockdown in ireland mm -hmm. and so we're going back so this is the first time after covid mm -hmm. covid kind of knocked the stuffing out of a lot of people i think yeah. mm -hmm. and so we're trying to resurrect all that and there's some really good enthusiastic people emerged in Ireland. So we're looking yeah. forward to getting back to talking to real people for, for yeah. a change. Yeah. yeah. It is good sort of um, you know, it's brilliant doing this, but it's but it's um but it's great talking to people in front of you, you know, people who are genuinely curious and just kind of like need a bit of guidance or a little bit of help with you know when, mm. you know kind of like about the actual the whole thing the whole not, not just the food the whole the whole sort of movement um and we do have yeah, some great conversations yeah. well that's true but i mean we, we you could you can do that on tiktok and you also can talk to more people at once i mean mm. you can talk to more people in an hour on tiktok than you can mm. with three hours on the street so the, mm. there is that mm. and uh, you know I've, I've been part of a little panel and stuff Mm. Um, and we've talked to farmers and they've been quite yeah. reasonable and mm. you know first off they might be a bit um, hostile but then we talk, talk about vertical farming and about the future mm. of farming subsidies mm. those kind mm. of things mm. and they think oh right well you know it's not as though you just want to kind of close me down and put me yeah. on the dole type of thing yeah, you yeah. Know, I, I want to say understand that some farmers mm. are actually going well you know I've never quite liked this idea of sending them to slaughter and everything so yeah. a lot of them want to change it's just that they're in a tradition Mm -hmm. And they're in a traditional, quite conservative mm -hmm. kind of setting yes. sometimes. Mm -hmm. So they, they're going to need help to trans, you know, to transform into, yeah. you know, arable farming and that kind of stuff. And, and mm -hmm. we're going to have to provide it eventually. Yeah. And we have some great examples. I mean, um, Rebecca knows up in Scotland with um, Farmers for Stock Free Farming and Surge and, um, you know, uh, Reformed. They're doing some great work with that as well. So it, it is common. It's just... I mean, I was talking to someone in um, in Switzerland, and, and she, she's doing exactly the same. You know, um, helping farmers transition to plant based farming, um, or, and also diversifying as well. So that's really the, the way we we need yeah. to go. Yeah, I think I think one thing that we need to do as a movement, um, or somebody needs to do it, is understand how the subsidy system works. And I imagine it's going to be a little bit like economics. It's going to yeah. be very very complicated. I imagine, yeah. but we we will eventually need to understand how the subsidy system works yeah. because farming is based on subsidies you know yeah. the, the idea of the free market doesn't doesn't yeah. apply to farming it never have yeah. you yeah. know so 
you know, a lot of, I mean, in, in Ireland, it used to be called the farmer's doll, which the farmers yeah. obviously didn't, didn't like. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, but we, we, we're going to have to engage in that process yeah. and then, you know, get, because for example, if you're going to change a dairy farmer into a plant-based farmer, there's mm -hmm. a heck of a lot of equipment they no longer yeah. need, you know, mm -hmm. that needs to be scrapped and all that kind of stuff. They're, they're going to need help to do it. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, 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 try to look at we, we always say that the farmers are not our enemy they are somebody who's just on a different path to us and we need to help them along on what kind of path um anyway we're running out of time and um, so that's been absolutely right. brilliant so so thank you very much it's been an absolute we, privilege we, we, didn't talk we didn't talk fast enough <laughs> <laughs> well um it's uh, it's been a really really great to talk to you so thank you so much for giving up your time um you're welcome. Really thanks for inviting me no, you're very welcome. So I'm going to sign off and say uh, thank you very much to Roger Yates. This is Anna Melia from Northeast Animal Rights saying thank you very much for watching and listening and goodbye for now. <laughs>